This is Pastor Troy. I hope you're doing well. We are wrapping up season two, but you know what that means? The best of season two. Here it comes. It's coming right at you in just a minute, but don't worry. We're in the studio. We're getting ready. We're getting things lined up, and very soon we'll be unveiling season three of On the Dock. In the meantime, you can go back, watch season one. Check it out. It is fantastic. It's not outdated. Go catch it. And now we're in season two, and get ready for this best of season two episode. Pastor Troy, we're on the dock right here, and we're ready to go with another rock and roll episode. We got the chairs pulled up. We're around the cottonwood table. We've played the song, and we are ready to roll. Uh, this whole song here that we got on the dock is our in-house recording. Dustin Griffin helped Ben do that, along with Lucas recorded that. That's on the dock. That's a that's a rip version, kind of a of On the Dock of the Bay by Otis Redding, my favorite secular songs up on the wall right there. Just for the record, uh, Otis did that song. It was like two minutes, 36 seconds. He only had one verse, and he had the chorus, and he got to the second verse. And if you know the famous song, he whistled. He whistles the whole verse. He whistles it because they had a concert someplace in Michigan. They had to get on a plane and go. It. He hadn't written the second verse yet, and they died in an airplane crash coming home and never wrote the second verse. And so all they had was that studio recording with the first verse and the whistle verse, and it became an instant number one hit. Wow. So I love the song because of the story on it. I love the song because I'm a Southern boy, you know, and sitting on the dock of the bay there. So Although we wrote a Memphis blues version. Uh, I love it because it's not finished. And so one of the things I want to know when I stand before the Lord is, Lord, can you get Otis to bring up and let's hear verse two? <laughs> so the Bible tells you, he gives you the desires of your heart. I want to know what Otis had in his mind. Otis, <laughs> come forth. Come forth, and I want to hear <laughs> verse two. He's like, and what we, sorcery is this? Yes, we want to hear it. That's right. So we're going to hear that someday. Hey, on the docks, all about conversations to propel your faith out of the shallows into the deep. Check us out on many of our platforms. We got eight platforms. Get us on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Google Google Play, Facebook, Roku, Rumble, SermonNet, and five different social media sites that you can talk about us all positively about. We don't do negative stuff. We want to build the kingdom of God. So get get with us in conversation on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Telegram, and Getter. Getter's new. Very soon, we hope to do live streaming on Getter as well with our whole program. They're doing they're doing streaming now, it, but you got to be like big people, like way beyond, beyond us. But they're they're streaming stuff much better than YouTube. It looks so much better, and 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 they don't cut you off or anything like that. That's so cool. we love you, YouTube. <laughs> we love you. You can't deplatform a guy who's literally standing on eight platforms. No, right? We got eight. <laughs> That's why we have eight. We have eight, Back so we can up. say whatever we want. We will be recorded. Subscribe, hit like, notify, <laughs> comment, share it with other people, and go to Patreon. Become one of our partners. There's four partner tiers, three sponsorship levels. We would love to have you be a part of our team here at On the Dock and On the Dock You can go to that website. And you can find all of our platform links. It'll click in and send you right there to it. So if you're illiterate about how to find those platforms, it will get you there. You can also get to Patreon there as well and other things. And then you can go to info, email us at info at on the dot org, and we'd be glad to walk you through, help you through, answer any of your questions. So we're good to be here. We are here again on the stage here. We got here, uh, we're around the cottonwood table here, and we've got uh, Mother Beth sitting back in the couch. She's kind of co hosting from the back here. Uh, yeah, you know, and then we got to my right, got Ben Ottolini. Ben is Ben's co hosting the whole series with me. How? Ben, yeah, how, 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 and we got Lucas in the studio as well here over here. He is uh, directing everything here, getting, keeping us in order and ready to go. And we are in our worship leaders of Southern Illinois super series. And we're in the, on the dock season two, we'll be running this series off and on all through this season two, especially all fall. We've got some of the most incredible worship leaders and people leading worship initiatives in the Southern Illinois region and beyond uh, joining us. And we are excited about what we're learning from that. Ben and I are just having a workshop. Basically, basically Ben, we're having a church worship workshop on leadership and we're just bringing these people to us and they're, they're, they're basically giving us a personal class. Yeah. I'm basically feel like I'm at a comp, like a conference 
We are. And, and I'm just soaking it all we're in. We're bringing the conference. Yeah. We're having it right here. We are learning so much. And what's cool about it is you can learn along with us. And what we ultimately go hope is that worship is enhanced in our region because of our collective work together. So we're excited about that. And we are in part two of this sub series, which is episode 11. And we're with Daniel Lopez. And he is the guy behind the Cedar Sessions of Southern Illinois. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, Daniel, I got this lovely picture. Daniel, that's a great picture. Yeah. Daniel, Whoa. Daniel, you're not just doing Cedar Sessions. You're, you're, you, you, you're, you're connected with Love and Truth Church as well. But you right. also, we didn't talk about this in the first episode. Tell us a little bit about your creative ministries, what you're doing. Man. Oh my gosh. So many things. Photography, videography. Um, I love to write songs, except that part of me is a secret. <laughs> <laughs> I've maybe sent a song to Ben. They never touched, and it made me sad because I was like, "It's not good enough for." But ben. you're doing you're, it's not it's true. Not good you're, enough for anybody. You're doing, you're doing, Ask Beth about. I mean, songs. you're doing major events photography right now. You're doing you're doing photography for weddings and major events, and yeah, I'm. He's done a couple things for us. Uh, Personally, as our family, our, our grandfather's hundredth birthday, uh, just phenomenal pictures and video he came out and did for us, just incredible. Um, I, I can't encourage you enough to, to get with him uh, if his schedule allows it. Uh, hire him. I mean, it will capture uh, your experiences incredibly. Thank uh, you. Right now, you can't have him next month. We're trying to engage him for another project. So uh, for the, we're, we're trying to tell the story of the house. Hope can get ready for the tenth year anniversary, which and is a great organization. It's a great organization. Yes. So we're going to bring him on board, and we're going to we're going to give him resources so he. Can do that well, and uh, we need Christian guys doing incredible video work to tell the stories of the kingdom, and he's doing that. He can also capture just your moments in life. I mean, we see your pictures roll across. We have a moving picture frame now in our house that kids bought for Christmas for us. Am and I on it? Your your well, your stuff's on it all <laughs> the time because we've got pictures that you've taken events for us, you know, different things, and they just get there. Whether it be a cedar session or this that, we've got pictures rolling by it because all of our kids can put the pictures on there. That's cool. It's amazing how many pictures. I actually think it are actually some of his pictures now. We probably ought to give you a royalty every one time. One Man, year. I'm going to have to retake your photos because I took photos for you guys a while ago. Yeah. And I can totally yeah. do better. The, the, than tw the 2018 <laughs> photos you did are in our, our main room. He did our Christmas photos. The kids did a gift for us. We need to do another set. Our family's changed configurations since. And by this Christmas, hopefully we'll have an another granddaughter. Praise Let's God. go. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have another granddaughter. And we, we, we have unloaded some people as well. So so we, we're ready for a fresh. We're ready. For, I don't know how to say that any better. <laughs> What's that? Wait, unload. What's that? <laughs> we unloaded one person. <laughs> so oh, I love the, the reality the, of this conversation. Yeah, the, the question is that here's the problem. The 2018 sits in our living room. It's the most incredible photo. And there's one individual that needs to be taken out of it. So we may have to get back with you and Let's rework that one photo. Let's do and, it. And, and, and I, could, could we borrow Rosalie Isabella? She could be stand in. We'll yeah. put her right in. They go, oh, Photoshop. Who is this child? Yeah. Yeah, she's a stand in. For $1 a day. You could yeah, they used to do that child. on soap operas. They would, you know, the soap operas, some, some, act, some actors would be sick on. Back in the day, you guys don't know about this, but they did a lot of soap operas live. They live casted them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if so and so's actress was sick or had strep throat for the day, they would say, today standing in for. Erica is so and so, and you'd see their understudy come on the stage, and yeah. that would be their show, and they get to be the actors for one day. And all day you'd be like, "Well, that's the wrong co hair color, the wrong size." You know, oh yeah, she's standing in, so yeah. Rosalie could stand in. There she's we go. She, she's dribbling. Yeah, she's dribbling. Let's yeah. get. Like can we get a close up? She's no, no. Dribbling well, a she's basketball? dribbling, but drooling. Get a close up of that, Lucas. Yeah, it's a dri dribble. It's, right it's a dribble close up. Praise God. We've never had anybody dribble on your table yet. Can your table take dribble? No, well, I mean. Yeah, yeah. You, you may have to put another coat on I this. Do, I need, do need to put. A, I'm seeing some scuffs that yeah, I'm like. I need to, have to get in here and tend, 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 tend to this. Do better, but so, it still looks great. So we do better. Do better. So uh, be better. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get to this eventually. Da Daniel, uh, Daniel goes to Love and Truth Church. Check that church out. Uh, he's not necessarily the worship pastor there, but you're on the platform there. You're part of that. Your brother I hang out. You hang out there. He would love to have you come out. We want you to be a part of that. So get connected with that in Craneville. You got the details there. Great church. He gave a great story about how Pastor Bob, serious influence, and you're coming to Christ. And what a great story you share with us mm. in the previous episode. Go listen to it. And then we, we were telling you about the fact that they're in the process of uh, leading these things called Cedar Sessions. Been developing this over the last year. We've seen multiple of these come so to pass. Cool. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Let me show this other picture from it, dude. We got this one as well. Got Ben. Look at Ben rocking it out on the guitar down there. And, and let me just say, oh, Ben. Yeah, I was going to try to fix that. Oh, you did? I, it? I, no, I saw it and I was going to fix it. <laughs> But I didn't okay. know, you were I'm going to hold this. <laughs> this right. is what I'm talking about. This is a live experience we're having right yeah, now. Yeah, this is live. This is in the moment. 
Lucas, this is real. This Lu- is real. Lucas is in trouble. This is this is a failure. No, we, we love Lucas. Why don't we blame Bo, the dog? Yeah, the Bo definitely did. <laughs> Bo is such a. But I, I'm actually seriously impressed that you have all these photos and you're so organized. Yeah, and you just look phenomenal they look good don't they They look good what's cool about this is is you've got dustin here dustin's going to be in our series you'll hear him we've got ben yeah let's see who i've got ben uh we've got uh israel who's already been in one yep. uh nathan's in the picture there we don't have nathan i don't think Love scheduled but maybe we have to drag him in but nathan's been a worship leader in the area and stuff he's been out and abroad and he worshiped he was leader before ben here at community faith church and uh who else is in that oh. um Gosh, there's just, I mean, there's a core group of, mm-hmm. of the heart of our worship area here and the right kind of connections. Right. And they're the kind of guys we're working with on a lot of things. Right. Very unselfish bunch of guys. Yeah. Uh, just working together and, and team that pulls that together. And with all your production people, it's just, ama- just amazing what they're doing. So the Cedar Sessions are amazing. Go check those out. Uh, you can do that by going to, I think I got, let me, where's that? Go to Facebook at Cedar Sessions. You can watch that video and check YouTube. out what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. YouTube as well. Go to YouTube and, and yes. check that out as well. Mm-hmm. What, is, what is the YouTube channel? Cedar Sessions. Cedar Sessions. Mm-hmm. Go check that out. Please, and hit subscribe, hit like, yes. notify for them. Like and they're subscribe. not far from monetization. <laughs> Help them out. It's good to see somebody in the kingdom get blessed with us. And then on, on the platform today, here in the room, we got Mackenzie with us again. Uh, Mackenzie, glad to have you back. Yeah. Rosalie, good to have is you Is Rosalie back. doing okay? She's doing good. Yeah, she's got a little entertainment going on there. Yes. I love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she can do whatever she wants. You can always give her Mother Beth. Mother Beth's not allergic to children. Uh, she's got a lot. That's why they call her Mother Beth. Yeah. She's like old Mother Hubbard. <laughs> but not the old. Yeah. Young Mother Hubbard. There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. So we're glad to have you guys on the on the platform yeah. again. Let's get in. Let's go back into the conversation. We, we got into the heart of worship at the end of the last one. Let me recap that a little bit. You, you said the heart of worship for you is putting my eyes on him to the point that nothing else matters. Uh, really, really well done. Being very intentional about that, being very focused in that, and that our, our our only true success is ultimately standing before God, being before God. That that's kind of what you laid out as the heart of worship for you. And and I really love the concept. The cedar for for you guys uh, is that Psalm ninety two that we're planted in the house of the Lord, uh, and, and it will be there'll be fruit in our old age. You know, you're talking about a relationship that will last and stand time. Mm. And that cedar is something that stands time. It yeah. stands off the rust and the moths and the decay. And it's just a tree that towers. Uh, it's it's what the house of God was built with. Yeah, come on. It's good stuff. So I love what you're doing with that. Um, I love where you're going with the heart of worship. Let's go just a little deeper. Tell us a little bit about um, when, when you're when you're leading these efforts. When you're working, you're you're kind of hurting cats. When you're working with all these worship leaders, <laughs> you've got a unique bunch though, because these guys are really not very selfish guys. You got some very humble guys. You're very blessed, but, but still when you're worshiping and when you're leading and you're working with other worship leaders and, and working to create this experience, what is the dynamic like working with, you, you got different personalities, different styles. And when you come together to create these creative experience, how does, what does that look like? I think the easiest way that we, I think Ben's helped a lot with that actually, and maybe even Ben can speak to that, but giving people room to own this space is, it's fundamental. Like the, there is, you have to give people room to own it because if it's not theirs, then they're not, they're not going to connect with it like they could because a lot of people will say, oh, that's their thing. It's not my thing. I'm just helping out. Yeah. Um, and I've kind of given a lot of the that part of gathering people to Ben. So I would almost say, Ben, how would you, how, how do you do it? Cause uh, it's all for me, it's all based in relationship. Like you said, we've all had relationship with each other for a long time before any of this happened. And it makes it so easy because we love each other. It's like all some, like some of my best friends in the world mm, yeah. and it, it makes it easy. It's like, w- wait, we get to do this. Yeah. Like, and so it's, and no one's ever like, it's not like, oh gosh, like oh, Ben's calling. It's like, it's like, yes, like we get to hang out, you know, and we get to do ministry together in something we're all so passionate about. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, they're, they're the most attentive cats in the world if it's hurting cats. Yeah, uh, and I think I was gonna say too, I mean, maybe you can you can tell me if I do that well or not, but I, I definitely feel like I've given you kind of the, the permission to yeah. 
run it. Giving pe- room pe- for people sure. to be themselves and, and take ownership is going to be a real key to anything. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Because I, I constantly run into people who will make excuses, but all those excuses are based in the fact that it's not their thing. Right. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, I'm just, I, yeah. I, I'm not just a backseat player. I'm not some extra guitar back here in the back. No, not. I have ownership in here and I, I'm participating. And, and I love this idea that like, even if you were just serving coffee at a cedar session, cedar sessions could not function if you did not do that. Right. And it was important to you. Right. Because if it's not important to you, then everything else is not important to you. And it's like, it's not about the platform. And I think that's the idea that actually jumped in my head when you asked that question. It's like, it's not a platform experience. It's, it's a personal experience that we're all sharing. Right. And so that's where that, Hey, it's my thing too. It's, or it's our thing yeah. comes in because that's kind of the language I've been pushing. And there's no competition. It's, there's no spirit of like this competitive thing that we do. It's all like, we just want to see each other do and be the person that like, like be the person God's called us to and mm. see that to its potential. And I've said that again yeah. and again, we have nothing, there is no goal. And I mean that with like the, the best intention is like, there is, there is no goal. Like we're just doing what we're doing for the one who matters most, you know? And it's like, that's also removed competition because if everybody's just trying to get the song to be seen on a video, we're doing it for the wrong reasons. I, I quoted this in Proverbs. It says, a man's gift makes room for him. And I think mm. that, that my mentor used that uh, to make sure that everybody had a, had a space that they could excel at what they do. And when you bring those excelling people together in that, in that, that expanding space, you get dynamic increase. Mm. You, you get, so, so if every, if you let people bring their gifts and make room for them, the table gets bigger. The table gets stronger. The table gets more powerful. I love that you're saying that. Yeah. I actually taught when we were in Jackson, Tennessee, I taught our team that if we do anything, it needs to look like this. It needs to look like a table where we constantly add chairs. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what we eat. It's the fact that we get to be yeah. together. Honey, will you look up that scripture and give me the scripture reference to that? The It's Proverbs 16, something like that. Like that. But a man's gift makes room for him. Meaning a lot of churches, a lot of pastoral ministries, the, you know, it'll feature the senior pastor or the lead pastor or the mm-hmm. lead worship leader and maybe some high, high flute and vo- vocalist, you know, that's well known. And everybody comes to see that person or this person. And if brother so-and-so is not teaching today, I'm not here today. I, I, I've been to churches. I, it's a sad thing, but I've been to churches where where if the lead guy was not preaching, you could see people start to exit. They literally left the service. T.D. Jakes, I went to Jake's churches for a year when I was getting my doctorate in Texas. Uh, Jake, you never knew whether he was preaching or not. It was the most cleverly kept secret. He could preach one of the three services and not preach the next one. It, 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 you would never know because they knew that people wouldn't show up because people came to hear him. And it was, I know it's a frustrating thing for him because it is for me too. I don't, yeah. I want people to come to hear the word, not me. And, and, and if, if I put somebody else in the pulpit in place of me, that's because I trust them to bring that word. Right. And that'll be the word for the day for the house. Right. You don't need to come because or not come because of me. It's not a baseball game. I'm not Albert Pujols. You know, <laughs> you know, that's not what we're about here. It's not a right. celebrity thing. It's about trusting that God's going to have his person there for that hour, that moment. And he can use a lot of things. If he can use a donkey or stones, he can use me. And so, so literally when, when Jake's is not going to be there, you will see people when they realize he's not in the room, you'll see people start filling out. It's like, I'm going to, I'm going to Tony Evans church. You know? I'm, I'm, I'm leaving, you know, and, 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 and that's when you're doing that, you're bringing the wrong thing. Mm. Number one, you're not going to get what you need, but what's better though, is I like it when, a, when, a, when a church when a man's gift makes room for him is where a pastor goes, it's not going to be about me or, or this worship leader says, it's not going to be about me on the platform or about this or this guitar player, but I'm going to use everybody's gifts are going to be a part of this. And we're going to collectively, we're going to own this experience Yeah, and together we'll make it stronger. And when people see there's a buy-in and they matter and that they're different. And I like what you said in the previous episode, you said, when we talked about the key to really having the heart of worship, you said, loving God, loving people and creating spaces for that. You know, when you, when you let people be a part of that, you've now loved God because you're loving God, but you're loving people and what they can give to God. And you're creating an expanding space. I see the Cedar sessions as expanding the heart of worship in our region. It's stimulating our own worship leaders. So when Ben comes back to Community Faith Church on Sunday from a Cedar session, he's hot. 
I yeah. mean, I, some pastors can well, be... Well, he's been hot for a really long time. But there are pa- there are pastors... born this way. And I hate, I hate to tell you, there are pastors can be intimidated by this. They say, well, I had nothing to do with that. Well, you need to be focusing here, you know, young man. You know, back in the day, that could have been seen as competitive. To me, it seemed as, it seemed as combustible. I, it, it seems to me there, there's a fire. And, 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 and anytime individuals begin to try to control that fire it becomes boxed and controlled and it's it's, it's called a fireplace yeah. it's not called the shekinah glory the shekinah glory of god is not controllable it's not manageable it will burn where it wants to burn and i really see what when you talk about a man's gift makes room for him you're building a, a network and a system where everybody's gifts have room to breathe and, and it flourish i love that i was going to say the the biggest thing that stuck out to me while you were talking was the idea that the reason people are protective of their church is because what matters more is the organization and not the people because if everything is is if the standard is loving people and loving god organization can change around that i totally i I, I think it's very well put i i think unfortunately a lot of times that is what's driven the rise or fall of the church in, in this region and beyond is the desire for people to protect the walls of their fortress because it's it, because organization, and I understand this. What phrase. about us here? What about the people it, in the pews? Right. What, I I really appreciate them over there, but but this is where things happen. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. uh, there's a book called Up Your Organization, and it really spoke to me about this idea that when you want to up your organization, you actually have to put people first. Yeah, and, Mac, Jocks, John Maxwell Law lived and lift the organization. He's you incredible. Lift, you got to lift the lid. Yeah. The problem is. If the highest lid leader in the room is an eight in your organization, you can't get to a nine. You have to have your people yeah. go out to other organizations to find a Chris Hodges, to find somebody else to pull you to the nine or ten. hundred percent. And so, if you just self-contain, you will not. Ne- you will just be inbred. You will just be inbred, and that is not a good thing. The Holy Spirit is yeah. out there and has other gifts and other people, and a man's gift makes room for him. And you, this cedar sessions is causing cross pollination that will cause a generation of growth. It's gonna cause offshoots of young worship leaders. There's worship leaders sitting in y'all's shadows right now that I think are gonna have, inc- I've watched them develop so much recently. You're gonna see incredible talent from them because they've known a different model than the previous model. And so it's I a love process. that because people are not, people are not the means, they're the end. They're the end. Right. I think the most sacred thing inside of the church is the people who are actually in it. I, I totally not, agree. not, the organization yeah. or the service that that happens it's not about the system that's put in place it's a hundred percent about the people and the people are the sacred the sacred part because if there was a book i read uh and it talked about this chinese man who found out about christ and was trying to preach the gospel and was leading revivals and it simply expressed that if we do not every honor every single believer we are dishon even if they're wrong even if they mess up we are dishonoring the christ that lives within them and i i think when we're living in churches that celebrate only pastors who are celebrities or right. musicians who are celebrities right. we actually miss opportunities to honor the christ within the individual who just came to attend to That's worship right. Right. and it's like we're just living this um this gap faith where it's like if you're not on the platform you're not anointed and it's like the anointing only lives on the people who are, who are like seen. It limit it limits the kingdom. I mean, I run across that. I mean, over the years, you know, we, we, we do church planning around the world. I, I have spent, gosh, I mean, we've got churches in, that we lead in Thailand and Africa and we do crusades and stuff. And I, I was sitting in, in a meeting uh, with old leadership mindset several years ago. And, 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 and it's, the mindset is crushing when it's all about just our four walls. When you just yeah. focus on our four walls, you're really already creating a museum that's decaying and dying. It's, it's, it's a, it's, you're basically describing a relic. Right. You're not describing a cedar, a living thing that's right. growing in forever. And I, you're sitting in the meeting and you're challenged, you know, I, you know, and this is true. I mean, you, you can like this or not like this, but this is the truth. I, we, we were, we were leading crusades in Thailand in January, starting churches in places where Buddhism has flourished. And the, frankly, the disciples didn't get to. Right. They, Thomas died somewhere in India. He never got to Asia. 
You know, so we're planting the gospel in places that have never heard the gospel, mm. never been there, and we're being successful there. So we're there in January, and in March we're in Africa doing crusades, and we're planting churches in places that haven't seen the revival and ever. We're going back in June to work with developing a pastors in, in Thailand. We've got 26 pastors there. And I sit in a meeting, and, 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 and a leader looks at me and goes, you know, I, I've been keeping track of you. And I said, what do you mean you've been keeping track of me? He says, in the last six months, you've been gone, you've been out of the pulpit 14 weeks. 14 weeks you've been out of our pulpit. Well, all those weeks I was either in Thailand or in Africa or back in Thailand preaching the gospel, literally, you know, literally preaching the gospel, not just once those weeks, I was doing multiple events. And so it's not like I missed 14. I actually preached 36 times. I had laryngitis the entire year from preaching crusades in places that were rough. And they said, you've been gone 14 weeks. You know, you're our pastor here. How are we to respond to that? And I'm thinking, Gosh, we've, we started five new churches that are called Community Faith Church. I baptized 152 people this year. Who in Southern Illinois baptized 152 people? Maybe a handful of people, if yeah. that. And I'm thinking, and they said, but but that's them there, and what about us? And I'm thinking, that's not them there. That's the kingdom of God. Yeah. What, what, the, what, what fortunate thing that a church in Southern Illinois could have the influence someplace that even the the, the the, the disciple Thomas didn't get to. Yeah, I was going to say that's a really great point because that actually should have set up that person to say, or you could have said, well, what are you going to do when I'm not? Well, they had never left the country. They had never left the country. So, And here's the funny part. So we're sitting in the meeting and they're like, you haven't gone. You've been gone. Like like you owe us money back because we've been paying your salary. And first of all, you're not paying my salary. The tithes of God are paying my salary, doing the work of God. And I asked, and my question was, in the Sundays I was gone, Every Sunday, did not somebody show up to preach? And in and, and that days, it was my son, Josh, yeah. who is a better preacher than me, probably. And I'm thinking, the was the gospel preached? And he said, yes. And here's the funny thing. We had just taken in like 25 people in our new members class. So I've been gone. We've taken in people. Our church has the highest level of giving we've ever have. And you're griping because I was gone for 14 weeks, yet the kingdom expanded there. The kingdom expanded over here. Yeah. And what you're mad about is you didn't have control of me for 14 weeks and you don't even like me. So why did you care? Yeah. I, Pastor Eddie used to say this phrase, the issue is never the issue. <laughs> control is always control the issue. is controls the issue. And, and what I love about what, what I see in the new worship leaders is a shredding of what's that? Am I in trouble? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's comforting me uh, right now. Might, we might have to cut out this part. Of <laughs> no, 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 no. Heck no. Heck no. Heck no. I'm just kidding. He's spitting fire. Is everything I'm saying the truth? Yeah. It's the truth. It's, it's God's truth. Oh, this, is true. It. this is true. Yeah. But, but what people don't understand, you're quashing mm. the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean, I don't need to be in this pulpit 14. What I need to make sure as a senior pastor is that I have responsible people hearing the voice of God, speaking to the people of God. Right. And people don't need to be spoon fed by me every week to, to get their, their jive on. Yeah, what they need is they need good vittles. It's ownership. It's ownership. Yeah, and it goes back to what we were talking exactly, about. Exactly, relationship. It's, it, and you are making room for people. To it, own something to they own should something. have been owning forever. And to participate. Like when you say, look, when you accept Jesus into your heart, it is not for you to then begin being passive with your faith. If it's true, if it's real, you get activated. You yeah. get you get momentum. See, that in the book I just remembered, it's called The Heavenly Man. It's this kid who's in, in China, has no resources, begins to pray, begins to fast. The Lord brings him a Bible by a Christian who is literally hiding because he doesn't want to share his faith because he, they will kill him. Right, right. And so he's in his town and God brings this Bible to someone who's actually going to use it. Right. So there are resources waiting for you if you would just activate yourself That's and right. say yes. Right. We don't have the cameras and the equipment and all this stuff. I mean, Lucas is loaded with stuff. audio equipment. Yeah. But it's like I didn't I didn't sit here and say, "Hey, you have stuff I want to use it." All I all I've been genuinely trying to do with Ben and Lucas is like, dude, can we just hang out? Can we goof off? Can we create? Can we do something special? And then I activated what I already had in my heart and they love me and they were like, let's use it. 
and that that's all it is. And if you knew the teeth I had to pull to get this equipment, and and and, and <laughs> you had to convince people what you to do, and if you knew oh, the conversation, I'm, I'm sorry, that didn't happen no, no, to me. No, no. And if you and if you knew the conversations that you're caught in the hall and say, do you know you're spending too much money, Lucas? You know, you know, you know the number of conversations you get cornered up, and you just say, guys, can you just trust us? God is doing something yeah, here. Yeah, that's it. But yeah. the problem is some people can't see past their own four walls. But there's a new wave and there's a new vision coming. That Cedar session is really stimulating that. I really think uh, down the road we're going to work on this church project and that's going to be fostered yeah. by that and that, that spirit. I was going to take that a step further. I would almost say that people can't see past their comfort. Yeah. And, 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 and in this case, it's their own short-sightedness. 100%. Because some people can be totally generous and, and they can give that, but some people out of control got to be able to understand it in some older model. And we're not, we're, we're not trying to change the gospel. I don't think Cedar Sessions is changing worship. No. I think it's, it's just bringing worship into a way in which people can participate today. I would almost say it's about aligning re, or realigning our focus because it becomes about, did we make charts? Did we make... Did, we, did it bring more people into the church? Did it, did it do what we think benefits the organization? Right. And I don't want to do that. I want to create something where people say, did it lead me closer to God? Well, absolutely, I see that. With that's everybody it. that's attending, they come in here hungrier and more ready for the word. It, even the people that didn't go are wishing they went to the last one or they want to get next to somebody. It, it's <laughs> No, there's a, there, when you get near the Shekinah, there, even Moses had to cover his face for a period of time after he came away. It's having yeah. an effect. And, and God forbid that we ever step in the front of that, but let's say a man's gift makes room. If you feel called, get involved, push and be a part of that, you know, and just, just like I said, just go to YouTube and watch one of them, get connected yeah. with it, look for opportunities. I love what's happening in the cross pollination of the worship leaders that you're connected with. Ben, uh, Lucas, Southern Illinois is great. I see it uh, challenging the pastors, your pastors to work. And I hope to kind of coordinate with some of the pastors to do some other stuff like that. And I, I just see this whole thing coming as a wave where God will be glorified in this region. Uh, really, really will. Yeah, I think when you build what you love, it's so easy to commit because when you fall in love, it's, it's, there's a chase in you that just arises and you're like, we're right. going after this. And sometimes you're just going to have to let some of the people that are old sticks in the mud. You just got to go see you. And, and, and that's what I've done. Just see you go. You're, you're not a leader. You, you know, you, you know, you could have been, you would have been, but you chose not to be. You're it's, it's just move on.org. Just go on and go. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 but, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Right. I love that's what you're doing. And we're going to yeah. plant things that are going to last, not be controlled, not mm -hmm. be boxes, but that are going to be last. Let me, let me get to this next question. What are three to five things, maybe th three, at least if you can get, help me get there that, that would help you help you can maybe help people in the pews, people in the seats that they haven't been to a Cedar session, but, but in getting people ready to have maybe a Cedar session in their own church, kind of getting in the mindset to kind of come to church next week mm. with a different mindset, maybe to love God, love people in their own context, to bring their own gifts, to, 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 to kind of yield to God. What are some things you would help people uh, prepare themselves to enhance their worship next week and have a cedar session of their own uh without having to wait for the next event they can come to the next event but how would you how would you coach yeah i would say you can take our idea i would say this to the camera you can take our idea you can take our music you can take our structure you can take our f format it doesn't belong to us anyways it belongs to god it's not our thing it's his thing and it's for everyone so if you want it use it Praise do god. it yeah, do it your yeah. way yeah i don't really care because the whole point, if you're going to be real and you're going to be authentic, it means that you can give it away. So how, have it. How, how do you how, how do you how do you how do you prepare yourself to have that experience? You know, you know, you know a lot of people come to church going, "I'm going to church. I hope the preacher's not long today. I, I don't want to get the I, I want to get the chicken while it's still fresh today at the restaurant after church." And they come to church expecting it almost to be over before it started. They really come hoping it's not long that they don't get a whole lot. They just want to get just enough to tell their friends, "Like I got my thing on." But but how do you change the experience where people come to expect an encounter with God? God, and they they're even willing to to miss lunch or dinner if necessary and just just have that desire how do you change that attitude walking in you know it was interesting because i sent a couple texts for the last one and every person showed up that i texted and i was like well shoot i should have texted everybody more people <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you know i i believe that there are there are ways to convince people to show up but i think people sometimes need proving 
before it's actually something they're going to show up to. And lately it's like, we've just been doing something that we genuinely care about. And we really don't care if people show up because the only one who needs to show up ha already has, and he's yeah. in the room, right? Yeah, it's the right. Holy spirit. It's the presence of God. He's already shown up. Right. And so if everybody misses out, if one person shows up and gets and catches what we're doing, we've won. Right. But okay. really, even if no one shows up, we've won because we were obedient to come to the house of God and give him the attention that he deserves. Yeah. And so it's like, it's not about raising our numbers or raising our, you know, whatever organization or, you know, I don't even know what we're doing. But, like it, I mean, I mean, but, but how do you, how do you, I guess, let me rephrase the question. How do you move people from coming to be spectators to being participants? How do you change that mindset? You walk with them. You walk with them. You walk with them because discipleship is, is a hundred percent saying, Hey, will you follow me? Hmm. Walk, walk with me. So it, it, very similar to your story of the pastor sitting there and cutting the shrubs with 100%. you hundred percent, and you walked into the gospel with him. You're saying that that, that model works as well you, as a worship leader, just get the people to come along and trust you and begin to work. Is, worship with Israel you. has practiced it. I've practiced it with like videography and photography. And I think I should use it more with like, what I'm doing in Cedar sessions, but it's saying, Hey, just be, a, be in the room. I think that's the first step. Oh, stop, like stop overcomplicating it. Just show up. If you would just show up, something might happen. But if you never show up, nothing's ever going to happen for you. you and, and being in the room doesn't mean you're, 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 you can be in the room and not be in the room. You could come to church and not be there. We but, see that a lot in the pews. But see, I'm telling you, if that person shows up and their head's not in the room, oh, just give it time. Because it's like, oh, yeah, I feel something, but, you know, I'm not there yet. Okay, we'll show up again. So be in the room show and, up and have your head and heart there, too. It's like showing up to the gym. Yeah. I'm not the best at it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. The I was terrible guy. at it. I'm glad you worked <laughs> out for me this morning. But I'm going to tell you, there is something to be said about consistently showing up. Yeah. Eventually you find that it's making a difference. Yeah. You didn't know, you know, one week, two weeks go by. You didn't notice you lost any weight. Do you, is it, comes, is it being patient or being faithfully patient? You think, or just being, being, being committed. It's commitment. It's commitment. It's commitment because commitment gives you the de desire to be patient because if you notice there's a change in your life it was because you were committed and then when you got that reward from being committed you realize i can be more patient because i know there's there's a reward on so the be in the room you need your head and heart there you need to be committed and, and be committed in that commitment that commitment equals in the end faithfulness you don't have to be gifted you don't have to be talented you don't have to have all the knowledge or the wisdom all you need to do is show up that's and really if you show up, I promise you, you're going to learn something. You're going to find out something. You're going to be connected with people you weren't connected with before, but you have to keep showing up. Nobody wants to be connected with a flake. Nobody wants to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to hang out with people who just don't want to show yeah, up. And, and you know what people do, I, and, and you talk about new connections. I think it's a good one to add because people will show up right now. People church shop, they come in, they're at our church and they're at your church next week. They're at the next church and they come in and they look at the show and they go, yeah, Ben, did, ben got an eight. Uh, the pastor got two. We're, we're out of here. Gosh, you got next, it so next, 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 next <laughs> one. And then they uh, go, they go, they go down to love and truth. And you know, Bob gets a 12 cause he's a great guy. And uh, Israel got a 12, but they didn't like the light show. The light show got a six, you know, so they go to Southern Only Worship Center and they've got the newest, hottest lights and they get a 12 on the lights. The preacher, well, he looks great. He's handsome. He, he got a 14 <laughs> and you know, but, but Evan, they didn't like the fact that his click tracks, his songs were too fast. So he got a, he got an 8.5, you know? So, so, and then they, they get down, they go, honey, we've talked about it. I think we're going to go here for a while. And then, and then they go there for a while. They show up back at that church and they've got a guest preacher. Oh, I hate that. Well, they got to start the process over. You're never, if you, that's how you're evaluating churches, if that's really, if you're just going in to do like the next American Idol, then I, I, that's, you're not going to connect. You, you got to get to know the person a little bit. Yeah. You know, you've got to be in the room a little bit. You so, know, the best way to do that, there's an episode in New Girl where uh, Schmidt <laughs> does. Theology of New Bi Girl. It's called, yeah, it's no, called no, Bi yeah. is it biden -ing? I don't know. Lucas For millennials, it is theology. Is it, do the Joe Biden where you just show up. You're just there. Yeah. Anywhere the person you want to learn from or grow with or be or do something they're doing. Hey, you know what? Be there. Yeah. Be there. Yeah. If if you're talking about how can I get more plugged in my church, be there. 
You, that's number one step. If you want to do more or you want to have more for your life, you got to show up even for yourself. And I think a lot of people aren't willing to show up for themselves and they're definitely not willing to show up for other people. And that's where it starts. Well, and I think you've got to be a little patient. When you check a church out, if you're just coming in as a consumer and you're just going to watch one Sunday, I mean, we are families. I mean, you got to get to know the family a little bit. Mm. And so it, it's, and maybe it really is a dud, you know, you know, give it a couple of weeks to find out if it's a dud, be in the room, actually participate in the room. Don't just judge in the room, come in and yeah. open your heart up. Yeah. And then if that doesn't work, you know, there are other places to go. I don't think every church is for everybody because I, but I think the kingdom's got a place for everybody. But it took time because it, when I showed up to love and truth church, I was not open. Not right. I right. was not open. I was very judgy. I was very upset that people even go to church when they're all hypocritical. I think that's something yeah. everybody likes to say. There's a bunch of hypocrites there or they're not even living it. Or why is that guy singing? We all have failures. But, I have failures. But much of the much of the church is treated like a spectator sport or a performance based ministry. And what we're saying here, and what you're saying is, you got to just get in the room, and you're never going to experience God till you just sit down and realize He's the center of the worship, not you. That's hard when you have organizations that posture us to think that way. I know it's and it's built that way. And, and we talked about this on a previous episode. We want the best lights. We want to have great video. We these things are good. We want to give God our best in worship. We don't bring broken calves and, and, and poor offerings before God, but we want to make sure that those don't become the object of our idleness, but he is. So we're bringing the best in worship, but we're not going to say, well, if I don't get the best, I can't worship. We want to give the best and you have to put that out. And so I think some people get confused the shows for them and they don't realize we're bringing our best before God. Yeah. And there's a confusion that they think they bought a ticket to something at the civic center. And then they're going to decide at the end, whether they get one, two, three, four or five stars. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and I'm not saying that we shouldn't do things well enough that people leave. And there was a value to their right. spending time with us. I'm not saying we shouldn't put effort into it, but it cannot be the focus of it, nor the, the object of it. Right. And, and I, I would say too, at the, at the end of the day, you can't fabricate an encounter with the Holy Spirit. You cannot fabricate. You can't fake that. And, and don't worry, churches are trying to do it every week, whether it's done, with, mi whether it's done with minor chords. We get the right fragrance. In the there. right fragrance, the right minor chords. We get Justin to the come right in and play some gospel If he flickers chords. the lights and we do gospel minor chords at yeah. the right time, Sister So-and-So will bring out bring out a word as she always does. You know, you know, all that is is, is just as, 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 can be just as structured as the old denominational church was. Right. And what we need to do though, is have those moments where we can just be in the room with God. Yeah, that's and it. give him fully ourself. Let your ma let a man or woman's gifts bring forth their very best and see what God does. I, I love what you're doing here. Be in the room, uh, head and heart have to be there, being committed. That commitment will develop into faithfulness. And and, and 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 you don't have to be, I love this, gifted and talented. No. You just have to be in the room. Yeah. And really give what you have as your best. Because that could be making coffee, could be the greeter, could be, could be clean up afterwards. It could just be rolling up the cords the way Lucas wants them rolled up at the end. It, you know, when you've given, I, 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 we say that kind of jokingly, but the guys, like when we did the Christ event, we've got a couple of some men in our church that stayed out with us to the very end to roll every cord up and they rolled them up right. They're the, the MVP. They're, they're the MVP the yeah. because it, you're exhausted and they're out there. It's like they're cleaning up the battlefield, yeah. you know, and it, and it gives you hope. And so every piece makes a difference because sure. you get home and you're home earlier and you're fresher and you realize that other people bought in they gave what they had. And I just think that's good. And then you said in the end, new connections will be formed. I think that's some real strength there to worship. Uh, we're going to jump out of this episode. We're going to come back in the last one here. We've got some really good home run questions for you. Uh, this is really good discussion. And it's a little different because the Cedar Sessions is a collective worship experience. And I want really want to encourage people to go check it out. Uh, let me bring that back up one more time. You can go, you can find them on YouTube. I wish I had to put that up as well, but find Cedar Sessions on YouTube. Uh, hit subscribe, like for those guys, Facebook as well. Check it out. Uh, it's incredible what they're doing, different places. When is it? Do you have a, is another one in the plan yet? Are, are you talking? Actually, yes. I'm trying to debate whether or not I want to throw a, f a fourth one in there. Um, but most likely, uh, just, just check out our Facebook, watch our Instagram. We'll drop when the events are happening. All right. And again, you can get the tickets, um, and really most of the spaces are limited. So 
Fantastic. Don't miss out. Well, we'll be back with Daniel in uh, part 12. We'll be going a little deeper into this. we got some great questions. You don't want to miss it. Go back and listen to the previous one, too, as we introduced the whole subject with him. This whole series, Worship Leaders of Southern Illinois, is a great series. You don't want to miss it, so you can check it out by going to On The Dock, and you can find us at onthedock.org. You can find all of our archives and history there as well. You can get links to our platforms, and you can email us and get more information on the show and different things at info at onthedock.org. You can see our platforms listed right there, as, long as, our five, as well as our five social media sites. Please put those out and get Cedar Sessions in there. Make sure you hit some likes and subscribes and hit them as well. And let's see talking about them and, and, and get them connected. Subscribe, yeah, and hit also, like. Yeah, come hang out at COF. Yes, Check thank you. Troy. Hey, I appreciate that. I appreciate it's a, it's Hey, I'll let you. Church, yeah, great people. Yeah. And if you can't come here, come to Love and Truth. Go, go to both, whatever. Yeah. I like your brother told me. He says he does his church and he watches us on TV. So uh, yeah, I'm, we yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm more handsome on TV. Uh, if you want to be a partner or our, our sponsor, go to Patreon site as well. And here's the information as Daniel was sharing. We'd love to have you out at Community Faith Church. If you don't have a church home or you're out there looking, coftv.com is our uh, virtual campus site. You can check that out as well. We've got archive there as well. And you can watch us on YouTube and Facebook as well if I'm not being kicked off that week. Uh, every now and then I get a little trouble with these guys, but but come on out or, or as well go to Love and Truth in Craneville. Check out both of those campuses. They're great campuses doing great things, and we are certainly partnering together for the gospel. Daniel, thank you so much. Thank ben you, left Pastor the platform. Ben left the platform to take something. Uh, your wife went out with Rosalie someplace. It's just me and you and Lucas in the house. Uh, Beth is still with us back here, but thank you guys for everybody joining us. And as we've been doing all these series, we're not going to wrap up here, but what we're going to do is going to send you to something special. We have a Cedar session for you to experience. Uh, Lucas has selected one of these from a recent Cedar session. And he is going to put that on the back of this so you can enjoy and experience that. And get on that Cedar Sessions Facebook YouTube site. Find out when their next one is and come out and experience that for yourself. So the next thing you'll hear is we sign off at On The Dock. We'll see you at episode number 12. You're going to be here. An incredible experience from one of the most recent Cedar Sessions. God bless.
definitely our last song. And I just really, really feel like you have got to sing the bridge over your family, over your church, over your city. I'm tired of seeing the enemy just take advantage of the church. I'm tired of seeing the church fall underneath the feet of the lies that this world is going through. I'm ready to see the kingdom of God on top once again. I'm ready to see the church shining like never before. I'm losing my voice and I don't really care because I'm ready. So we're gonna sing this bridge again. And I want you to sing it with everything you got.